Good morning, beloveds. So I'm running a hair late um, because I walked into this room to, to do this live stream and the very elderly cat who was asleep on the couch behind where I sit, like just behind me, looked up and went, oh, you're going to feed me? And I went, well, I guess I have to feed you. So um, I um, fed him. So that he would let me do this. Uh, hang on. Let me see. There he is. That is my very elderly. <laughs> um, he's part Maine Coon. I mean, we got him. He's a rescue, so we don't actually know what he is. Um, but he's, uh, you know, 17. And got hyperthyroid and is probably deaf ish and so we were just like oh, okay <laughs> so I had to feed him before I could do this so yeah all right uh, and so there are four of them in here with me uh, there's the black one which you may have seen when I showed you Hayes and uh, then Chico and Sugar followed it followed in going um food good morning Susan <laughs> so yeah, that's how my morning's going. All right. It is January 27th. Our title is, I will bless everything and know that all good will multiply in my experience. Our first quote is, but whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, they being not a forgetful bearer, but a doer of the work, this person shall be blessed in their deed, blessed in their deed. And that is James 1, 25. Um, the next one is, it, God, was not created by the past, nor is it annihilated in the future. It is an eternal, permanent, absolute and from all eternity, it sufficiently embraces its essence, in its essence, all possible merits. And that is the cat climbing in a bag. <laughs> oh, sugar! And that is from the Maya, Mahayana. And then the last one is, that itself on which all things depend and from which every transformation arises. And that is Quan Zi. <laughs> She's now in the, in the bag with her head sticking out. Go figure. <sighs> All right. James, says, James tells us that we should look to the perfect law of liberty, follow its precepts, and then we shall be blessed in our deeds. This means to keep the eye single or centered on the presence, the power, and the responsiveness of spirit. The law of God would have to be a law of liberty, since bondage could not come from freedom any more than death could be born of the principle of life. We often wonder why we are so limited, and too frequently protect, project the blame for our limitations upon the universe itself. This is a psychological trick which we play in ignorance of the true facts. Limitations is not imposed upon us by the universe but through our own ignorance. Every discovery in science tends to prove this. As Quan Zi says, all transformation, that is, every form arises from the, from the invisible and takes temporary form in our experience. Unfortunately, none of these forms is permanent. We should look upon them as the play of life upon itself. In our experience, we are privileged by the creative to become co-creators in our personal affairs. As our lesson says, the divine creative spirit embraces every possible action. No greater freedom could be found nor given. We should daily open our consciousness to the divine influx, expecting greater wisdom, more definite guidance, and more complete self-expression. Today, I lift up my consciousness and receive a more abundant expression. I bless everything and know that all good will multiply in my experience. I expect the good. I live in a state of joyous anticipation as well as quiet realization. 
All right, so <laughs> a psychological trick, a psychological trick. Um, basically, I, that's why we use the teaching symbol of the circle V, um, <clears throat> because we talk about the divine mind and we talk about how absolutely everything that ever has and ever will exist, including everything that does exist currently, um, exists in idea in the divine mind, in the one substance. And then, so then we go through, you see the two little lines right here. Um, we go through the two lines and that's the law. And that is things coming into form. Uh, and so then the, obviously that bottom section is material existence. But you notice it's, <laughs> you know, it's a V. So things are always coming in and then they exist for a short period of time and then they go back. So things, people, ideas, what have you, everything always exists, but form isn't permanent. It never will be as far as we know. I mean, you know, as far as we, cause up to the, you know, the 3 billion years of existence has shown that things are constantly coming in and things are constantly going out. And so it's one of those psychological tricks going, okay, form is a permanent. What form is, is the play of life. It is God creating and the Hindus actually have it, the, the, the Hindus will explain it in a couple of different ways. One of them being Brahma dreaming. And that's what material life is. It's all a dream of Brahma. And then one day after 300 and... It's so many, it's, it's, it starts with three, but it's so many, like it's millions of years. Um, then, then Brahma will wake up one day and then when Brahma wakes up, the material world will cease to exist. And then Brahma will go back to sleep. The one will go back to sleep and he will start dreaming again and life will start over. The other way that I've seen it explained in the Hindu, and I'm going to paraphrase it a little bit because, again, I'm going to use Plato. That's exactly what the world is, is it is the one playing with Plato. The Plato is the one's own substance and it is creating things and then changing them and then creating new things. And where our power lies in this situation is we get to influence the creation. We are co-creators. We are not creators in and of ourselves. Uh, because the substance we are using is the one substance. But we get to go to the one and say, hey, I would like it this way. And the one goes, okay. Because the one never says no. Which is why we get things that we didn't think that we had asked for, but we actually did because we were not cautious about where our emotional power was going. Because the one... What the one recognizes is the emotional power. So when you flippantly say things and there's no emotional power behind it, then okay, that most likely will just simply fly under the radar. But when we say things, whether we want them or not, and we pack all that emotional behind, uh, power behind it, be it anger or, you know, joy or any of those, um, and I'm not going to say positive or negative because anger can be an extremely positive emotion when used correctly. Um, then, uh, then the one goes, Oh, okay. This is what you want. The one doesn't judge. <laughs> so, um, that's, so the, the only limitations that, that are put on there is us not recognizing how, it works how it works recognizing the emotional power packet recognizing that we have not only the right um and and i would dare say the obligation but i would also say the responsibility for co-creating our life 
we have the right, the responsibility and the obligation to go to the one and say, all right, this is how I would like my life or whatever the situation is to be. And then to put that emotional power packet with it. Uh, so then the only limitations are us. Now, I am not discounting that we can frequently be limited by others. But again, we are only limited by others to the power that they give us. Um, so in the long run, it, it does come back to us and our relationship with the one and our belief about our relationship with the one. So I will bless everything and know that all good will multiply in my experience by virtue of my role as co-creator. I have absolutely every right, obligation, and responsibility to tell the divine what I want. And then I have to listen. <laughs> because just because I tell the divine what I want, it doesn't mean the divine's going to deliver it to my front door. It might. But what the divine will do then is to start to nudge me in a direction. If this is what you want, then go here, do this, um, speak these words in this situation because this person will hear you and we will go from there. So speak your word and then close your mouth and listen. <laughs> How I, I recorded um, a, a snippet of the Today Show because they were talking about the art of listening and I, and I didn't have a chance to listen. So I was like, well, let me record it and then I will go back. When I have a chance to listen, I will make time to listen. And that that is the point of spiritual practice. I say that a lot. The point of spiritual practice. It's about our relationship with the divine, but it is also about making time to listen. So, um, you got the quotes. He explains them better than I do. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, they being not a forgetful bearer. It means never forget who you are. You are a beloved child of God. You are a co-creator. Do not forget who you are but a doer of the work. This person shall be blessed in their deeds. Okay, that's James 125. Uh, the Mahayana... Hey, get off that ear. Um, sorry. <laughs> uh, Rita was licking Hayes's ears and he gets his meds in his ears. So I needed to stop that for both him and her. Okay, uh, the Mahayana... It was not created in the past, nor is it annihilated in the future. It is eternal, permanent, absolute, and for, from all eternity. It sufficiently embraces in its essence all possible merits. Meaning, everything that could, will, does, already exists in the mind of God. That in itself, on which all things depend, and from which every transformation arises. That's Kwanzi. So James tells us that we should look to the perfect law of liberty, follow its precepts, and then we shall be blessed in our deeds. And then he immediately says, that means to keep the eye single and then or centered. Single. Focus is what he's saying. Focus. Focus on the presence the power and the responsiveness of spirit. So when we are doing our spiritual work, um, and that's the challenge when we are doing our spiritual work is to focus on what we want and to focus on what we want in the presence, in the present, <laughs> in the presence and in the present. So we use language of this is now, this is now, even if it isn't, even if it could be five years off, even, you know, so we speak our word now. And we focus on that during that spiritual practice. And then once we have done it and we have set that belief into the Play-Doh, then we can set it on the back burner and not worry about it. We focus during the spiritual practice. If we had to focus 100% of the time, we'd be nuts. 
it explains a little bit of, about the mystics, doesn't it? Because they they focus more than the rest of us. And they sound crazy. So, you know, when you have those moments where you sound crazy, chalk it up to a my mystical experience and know that in that moment you were focused on the presence. So, the law of God would have to be a law of liberty since bondage could not come from freedom any more than death could be born of the principle of life. That's a mouthful statement. It's like, look, the law. And we can get funny about the, the word the law um, because frequently laws are restrictive. But the one we are talking about, because we're talking about law with a capital L, um, this is liberty because when we know it and use it, it frees us. It is in our ignorance that it binds us. We often wonder why we are so limited and too frequently project. I love how he says that. Project. The blame for our limitations on the universe itself. And here it is. This is a psychological trick which we play in ignorance of the true facts. And one of the things about ignorance is, is frequently with ignorance, you have access to the information and you are ignoring it. So, it's like the hints are all around you. And that's where the listening comes in. Um, limitation is not a po imposed upon us by the universe, but through our own ignorance. Because we are ignoring the hints around us. I mean, we look at nature. We look at nature. Every discovery in science tends to prove this. I love how he hedged his bets there. Tends to prove this. Because, you know, there's always going to be those outliers. As Quan Z says, all transformation, that is, every form arises from the invisible and takes temporary form in our, in our experience. And I like how he says next, fortunately, none of these forms is permanent. Because things happen that we would rather not. Well, what is it? There's a quote that says, um, when bad things happen, when, when, when good things happen, rejoice. When bad things happen, know that they won't last. So it's like, we've got, it is. Fortunately, they are not permanent. But it means that when good things happen, we can create more. And when not so good things, or should we call them non-preferred things happen, they won't last. And we can create something better. Especially if we are not ignoring the, not ignoring the hints and knowing how to use the law. Okay, we should look upon them as the play of life upon itself. In our own experience, we are privileged by the creative to become co-creators in our personal affairs. It is our right, it is our responsibility, it is our obligation to be co-creators. To speak back to life and say, this is how I prefer it to be. This is how I want it to be. This is how I need it to be. This is how I desire it to be. Whatever language it is, speak back to life and say, speak your word. Speak your word. Because you are a co-creator. As our lesson says, the divine creative spirit embraces every possible action. So we can choose which action we want to embrace. No greater freedom could be found nor given, and we should daily open our consciousness to the divine influx, expecting greater wisdom, more definite guidance, and more complete self-expression. The point of spiritual practice is that relationship with the divine and to listen to come into that presence, to fully feel that presence in that moment. Because if we tried to do it all the time, we would be crazy. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. <laughs> Been there, done that. Um, but it would make dealing with the material world hard. 
And so the spiritual practice brings us into that so that we can set that in the back burner. It's always in the back of our head. It's always working. And then we can deal with the forms around us. So today I lift up my consciousness and receive a more abundant expression. I bless everything, the power of gratitude, and know that all good will multiply in my experience. It doesn't necessarily mean that I won't have things that I would consider not good, but it means that the good that is in my experience will multiply. It will outweigh, it will overwhelm what I would choose not to have. I expect the good. I live in a state of joyous anticipation as well as quiet realization. All right. So, I think that you just heard the mission. The mission today is to lift up our consciousness and receive that more abundant expression. It is about listening. It is about knowing who we are. It is about accepting our role as co-creator. It is, it, it is, it's about knowing that we have the power, the right, the obligation, the responsibility to direct our lives. He said it's the play of life upon itself. So let's go play. All right, beloveds. Uh, I'm going to move into the process of my day, but I'm going to suggest, as I always do, my spiritual practice that I, rec that I, that I ask you every day. Do something loving for yourself. Do something kind for yourself. Do something compassionate for yourself. Whatever it looks like. Lately, it's been a little chilly at night. I have been having a cup of hot chocolate. That is my loving kind. And more to the point, when I do this, I savor the way it tastes. I actually stop and fully embrace the experience, okay? It's short, but it is. So whatever it looks like, it can be the same thing every day. It can be a different thing every day. It is just I'm encouraging you to do that. Practice on yourself. Create that habit. Because as you practice loving, kind, compassion on yourself, you are creating a default setting so that no matter what happens, you can have a loving, kind, and compassionate response. And that does include the response of no. Okay? That is loving, kind, and compassionate for you and other people as well. So, um, don't ever think that loving, kind, compassionate is roll over and just take it. It does not mean that. There is such a thing as the divine no. All right, beloveds. I also encourage you, engage your mind and your body. Drink plenty of water. Go get some sunshine early in the morning. Um, and... Open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven to remind you you do live in heaven right here, right now. It's all around us. And it always exists. So, look for the good and praise it. It's the best way to find it. Okay, um, Reverend David should be on around 5 p.m. with you. I will be back with you at 9 a.m. You can catch us on all the social medias. You know who we are and where we are. I'm the running Rev Ryan. Uh... We are Creative Life Spiritual Center or Creative Life Spark. So find us. And have a great day, an amazing day, a wondrous day, a fantastic day, a magical day, a sunny day, a good day. And if that is too much pressure, simply have a day. Because you're not just as you are. All right, beloveds. You are the beloved child of God. Always. So know that you're loved. And I will see you next time.